Hello friends, this is a collective session and this is a collective feminine channel letter that is being shared from the collective feminine to the masculine. However, I would reveal more about this masculine towards the end of the letter. So let's get started. Dear Masculine, When I saw you for the first time, before that, I was going through a lot. I was going through a toxic situation in my life and I felt that it's high time. It's high time and I don't want to be in that situation anymore. It's high time that I have suffered. It's high time that I have been miserable. It's high time where I was going through confused emotions, someday very good, someday not so good and someday horrible. I had read about Jekyll and Hyde, but I did not know that I'm going to experience the same thing in my life. Meeting people or living with people who look so nice from the outside, but have so much, so much inhumanity from the inside. This term is written for people or a person who display two sides. But there are some people who display only one side to the world and the second side, the inhuman side, is shown to specific people. Specific people because they can take their energy, they can take their time, they can take a lot from them at the cost of someone else's happiness. I was struggling with this, but I did not even know fully what I was struggling with. All I wanted to do was get out of it, go away from it and never, never have to deal with it again. I was trying to escape from a very bitter reality that I was trapped in. When I looked at you, you look like a black and white picture without any colors. And that fascinated me. It was more of gray and I was looking for gray. I was looking for something which could soothe my soul. I was looking for someone who could understand me. Someone I could confide into. Someone who probably knew already what I had gone through. And when I looked into you, I felt that the black and white color of yin and yang could merge. I would bring in my shade and you could bring in your shade and it would just fit in perfectly like the last piece of the puzzle. In fact, I didn't have other pieces too, but I felt that you could be that piece of puzzle that would fit in and complete the whole image. Unfortunately, I was not aware what I was getting into. You said all the right things. You made me feel special. I was so intrigued. I was so interested and so enamored. But I was very sure that I had reached a point in my life where I could no longer fight with what was there. I prefer to fly away from it. I prefer to not be around it. And you look like the right place to land my chopper on. So I landed on it, on the spot that felt comfortable and big enough, spacious enough to park myself and discover some more things. So strong was my need or my urge to be in safe place and so strong at that time was the independence 
in me that i did not want to again fall back on somebody completely so completely that i would lose myself into it and i also made it clear to you that i am not looking for anything which is casual or anything which is not not serious enough to be pursued and i felt that you gave me all those signs you gave me all those answers like you were also into me the same way i realized that inner work is a lifelong process inner work cannot be completed any time near the future or any time soon even though we all would like to believe that if i do certain things if i put certain techniques in place if i make certain things a part of my daily ritual it will all be fine and at the same time you understand that there is certain joy in discipline but at the same time there is a certain joy in just playing not working too hard so you understand all of us understand people who are in the same energy that we need to do this this is a lifelong process we need to keep working on ourselves and maybe back then i was assuming that if i do certain things my inner work would be complete and i would reach a certain stage and i would be happy and it would be all glorious from there on i was looking for the big dream of happiness i was looking for a life that could be simple and normal i was also probably looking for something conventional while i was also aware that i was not conventional person neither my life had anything conventional in it but i was scared to be a part of it i was scared to be unconventional i was scared i was very scared to be boycotted i was very scared to be someone who would be left with no friends or family members no society you know no one around how would i survive that way so at the same time when i was really wanting to fly high in the sky i also wanted to be with some more people and looking back now i feel that you have to be some kind of a sociopath because you could read my sort of surrender to you and you could read that i was very vulnerable and you could also understand that i was out of something difficult something toxic something that could have killed me but i saved my life neither did i get killed neither did i commit a uh, a uh, sin that i would have repented which was obviously to harm my own self somehow i just managed and i left from there and i was in front of you like magically i did not know that this is going to be a test for me i did not know that my masters my spirit guides all of the people have so much faith on me i didn't even know that invisible people in invisible realms were watching out for me unless obviously the experience followed and taught me so much you were very sharp to notice that this person is a victim or she could be a prey so you actually knew that i was struggling with certain things i was already working on some pain i shared a few things with you i even told you that i had a very difficult relationship in the past and i had a difficult journey i had a difficult experience and now i am working on myself i told you everything and despite knowing everything and despite saying that you know it's bad that you had to go through it you did exactly the same things the same things how could anyone put another person in so much pain when they knew that they have already 
witness this pain and they have shared about the pain to you the worst thing was you always portrayed to me that you are not sexually interested in me and this is not the main thing for you and this is not the only motive and this does not matter to you and i tested you again and again and you failed to a point that when we were together and alone it was probably the worst experience of my life because i felt that i was under someone's arrest i felt i was kidnapped at gun point and i just had to do everything that was asked from me to do and after that you just vanished you just vanished you used me as a person you played me with me for a long time you kept coming and going back as and when it suited you you did exactly the same things that had already happened with me and you did it with more force and yet with a lot of conviction and a nice mask on your face of love you kept telling me that you love me it was true love it was pure love you have not felt anything like this you want to live with me you want to do this with me or that with me but at the end it boiled down to only one thing i felt even when we talked to each other and even when i tried to make things light and easy because there was so much heavy energy around me and you most of the times i was trying so hard to please you it felt like i was putting in all my energy just to make you smile or just to make you laugh you know all the jokes all the funny things every single piece of conversation we had was because of me because you would not talk about anything else at all there was no human touch in our relationship or our communication or our interaction so therefore i am not going to call you divine masculine because divinity and being divine is a very beautiful thing at the same time i am not saying that you can't be divine or you're not capable enough to be divine in the future maybe i don't know what is going to happen to you what has god written for you i'm not aware about that everything that we go through is maktub and we are simply here to follow the hukum we are simply here to follow the command of god if we just quietly just without asking any questions just follow the command of god i don't think anything would be so different but somehow i am also very grateful that i met you because of the same reason because you put me into a state of surrender where i stopped doing things for myself and i let things start happening to me so i was not going to once again please anybody else go out of my way to have a conversation make phone calls to fix things write messages to fix things or just plan dates or events and when cancelled without any reason or rhyme at the drop of the hat keep forgiving each time i was not going to do that anymore because you put me under strong depression you made it all about yourself everything was about the huge image that you had painted the statue that you had built and i was the one who put you on that pedestal i was depressed i felt pathetic every single day and the worst thing was that i chose to ignore i chose to ignore everything you said and did to me everything and there were some things that would probably cross the line of humanity and morality as well and if someone says that you love a person you are not going to present that person around pass the person around to other people just to please other people i felt literally that you wanted to pass me around or you were just keeping that in mind that once i am done with her then i can pass her around in fact i feel that your friends your 
family members your other people whosoever knew you they were so important you always made me feel that there was something off about me that i was a type of person you would not like to be seen with that i was embarrassing you in many ways that i was lower to you i was inferior to you and you were doing a favor on me even by meeting me or talking to me or hanging out with me the way you were always hiding our relationship because in private you were a different person publicly you would not even probably recognize me there was no acknowledgement as such that was given to me so it felt like i had literally fallen into a well after taking myself out from a dark pit and now once again i had to get out from that well the problem was here there was water too and there was no way to go out i got help from my spirit guides i got help from some higher power some angels who helped me and i also felt that you literally pushed me down from a from an edge from a height you literally pushed me down and you very well knew that i could die from this my life would be over from here on that i would be done and dusted with that nothing about me would be left i was just a piece of meat for you that's it that's what i was for you a piece of meat i had no consciousness according to you i had no feelings according to you i was a toy that you could play with a lifeless toy which works on batteries and obviously you were sucking up all my battery all my power you left me with no confidence on myself i had zero confidence after you left me after you chose to ghost me vanish from my life not reply to me not communicate with me and then in between you would also like sometimes drop some bread crumbs like after disappearing for so long one fine day you would choose to message me and say hi how are you or something you know like happy holidays that one happy holiday message would ruin my whole holiday basically why would you have to do that why would you choose to ruin a person's life and then you would even stalk on me and leave signs that you were around that you are looking at me that you're watching at me from a distance that i need to be somehow careful or i need to be on high alert i can't be a free person because you're watching me and then i have to again please you put up something online that you would like sorry but i am not falling for that anymore today when i look at you as a person i feel sorry for you i feel you're such a pathetic person i feel so sorry for you i feel so bad for you that i actually end up praying for you that i actually think that how can a person survive with the energy that you have in you you were so dominating that every time i was in your close proximity or in your periphery i felt this huge overpowering energy this dark energy around me which was so difficult to understand to comprehend it literally felt like i have to do everything that you want me to do this was the worst experience of my life and the darkest phase of my life i have never felt like i stooped so low in my conscious and aware waking world maybe under intoxication maybe under some drug or some kind of effect like that people would do it women would do it but i literally was doing everything you were asking me to do while i was conscious and aware of myself overall it was such a heavy experience most problematic was the disrespect i got from you the the way you disrespected me my existence on this planet my presence on this planet the worst was that you did it by using love love is the most purest emotion on this planet and in the name of love many people do many things and they are doing it 
but worst are those people who very well know the impact and the power of this emotion they know that what this can do to other people how it can put other people in hypnosis and yet they choose to manipulate people yet they choose to use people yet they choose such dirty tricks to just do what just do what just have some fun time you can pay someone to do that to you why spoil someone's life why play with someone's emotions the most narcissistic problematic thing here was that when everything was getting over and when you could see that i was no longer getting played and i was no longer that interested in this psychotic game i was turned into a culprit eventually i was told that it was all my fault i was told that i was the bad guy i was told that i could not understand you i was given all the responsibility for the relationship not working out i can take 50% of it and yes it was very wrong on my part i was not trained my mind was not fully tamed i was almost 50% there and maybe universe presented me with you so that they could make me 100% into it and make me respect myself more so i honestly feel that you're not divine masculine you are a distorted masculine and most importantly you are a wounded masculine you are a wounded person you have many wounds that you hide you look so perfect from the outside with the clothes with the bags the designer stuff the fancy you know cars or whatever the fancy things you possess i'm not sure um, because this is coming from a lot of people coming from a lot of voices but i know it is one voice right now but whatever you possess you always try to look so perfect from outside and if i would say even generally that things are not always perfect life is not always perfect we are not perfect and it's okay to be not perfect uh, but then god's way of creating us is perfect like you cannot find any fault in the way god has designed our bodies how life has been designed how the sun and moon have been designed how the clouds have been designed how weather the climate human anatomy the animal world the plant kingdom the whole universe is designed in such a perfect manner the only word that can imply to this is impeccable everything designed by universal highest energies is literally impeccable so if they have made this mistake in between you know where people like us are struggling i am 100% sure it's not a mistake either it is a part of the plan it is a part of the plan that i could not forget you and forgive you for such a long time but slowly and gradually when i started realizing my mistake when i was obviously treated like an outcast and i was not given any human touch or even empathy of any nature like there was no empathy in your words in your voice in your actions every time we fought it was always about you it was always about how angry i have made you how troubled i have made you whereas if i again assess this whole relationship it was literally you were getting served the fanciest food on the platter all the compliments that you were receiving all the time at one point i was tired of complimenting you so one fine day i burst like a volcano i could not hide anything i had to say everything as how it was i had to literally tell you that you're full of shit and you're full of lies and you're pathetic that's what you are and your attempt of constantly being liked by other people i was constantly trying to be liked by you i was trying so hard to be liked by you that i found that also very pathetic as much as i saw that you are a pathetic person i could see that i was no less i was equally pathetic and i was equally obsessed by you as much as you were obsessed by your own self so you were literally you were obsessed by yourself and me 
and I'm sure there must be some other people, other obsessed, crazy people around you who have turned you into this person who's constantly obsessed with his image and how he's perceived by other people. I could not play that game anymore. I quit. I quit from that game which which had turned me into a machine. It was really already so hard for me to get out of that life where I was a machine, where I was living a monotonous life every single day. And then just when I was 50% into it and 50% close to freedom, universe presented me with you or you with me, whichever way you want to see it. Maybe our interaction helps you as well. And that's the reason why I choose to keep my distance now. This is the reason why I'm not going to play the game of running and chasing, the game of hot and cold, the game of constantly doing this month by month or year by year or whenever it could be possible. I'm not going to do that because I want to just work on myself just the way you were so keen to work on your career, your studies, your life, your family, everything. For you, the happiness of your family, their well-being, for you, the friends that you had, everybody, you know, were so important. Your career was always your priority. And I felt that I was not anywhere close to even being your priority ever. I was probably in the last. I was the one thing that people keep for entertainment. I was just like the television or any other item, any other device, you know, that you would switch on. And each time you switch it on, you want it to entertain you. You don't want it. You expect it to entertain you. And if by chance it doesn't entertain you, it goes into the dustbin. That's exactly how I felt with you. Either I entertain you or I go into the dustbin. It also felt like you had many options, many other options, side by side, neatly kept, like you could pick anyone and ask them to entertain you and probably they would entertain you. This was the most bizarre thing about this whole experience that I felt like I was just a part of someone's entertainment. I was not allowed to be sad. I was not allowed to cry. If I would be sad and even if I would be in pain, even if I would be experiencing physical pain of some nature, it would be completely completely ignored like there was no consideration given to someone even a regular thing that hey I am sleepy tonight was not considered but if you wanted to sleep on time or if you wanted to go somewhere if you wanted to meet a friend then you would even cancel the plans and the events that we had already been working on for a few days so my dear wounded masculine I am very thankful to you in so many ways because you really helped in my awakening process. You gave me a strong reason to step out of the murk. And just when, you know, someone would think that you threw me from the edge and I'm going to fall and I'm going to break all the bones in my body, I actually learned to fly. I began flying. And just when people would think that I would never come out of that dark, depressing well, somehow some magical golden stairs were created and I so easily stepped out of it. Only when I decided to get out of my misery and stop depending on other people for validation, stop depending on other people for acknowledgement, stop depending on other people for love. All I wanted to do was to be in a positive and conversational romantic friendship with someone who's equally level-headed and focused into inner work. So I could feel that you were also showing me some kind of opposite thing in my life. Like when I wanted to do pure inner work and just work on my ascension process, I could see that you were only focused purely on getting materialistic 
things and possessions and rise up higher and higher in the ladder in the world of ego so you were actually walking on a very dangerous path and you met me right in the middle of it you could see very well very clearly that i had spiritual pursuits you could see that i was very much focused on my inner work you could also see that i was looking only for true love and i made it very clear from day one so you could have also turned around and you know probably just at least made mental notes or gotten yourself out of your misery but you did not do that you chose to walk in the direction of your ego and i chose to walk in the direction of my soul so obviously i am assuming right now that either you have fully merged with your ego and now you are a person who i cannot relate with at all or maybe just the way i stopped in the middle and thought about what the hell was happening with my life maybe you also got an opportunity to think about certain things and maybe it helped you in some way because meeting you has definitely helped me the first time we spoke to each other was probably the best actually because at that time we continued speaking for a long time i mean we spoke to each other without without really stopping we did take some breaks like some natural breaks but we continued talking to each other for a couple of days like 2 3 days maybe it was like the best conversation it was very open it was very engulfing it was very warm and loving and maybe that's the thing that i kept looking for throughout the relationship for a long time but i think i never found it i never found it and now i think about it and i feel that the first time when we spoke i was looking for something beautiful but i still had total control and just because i had so much control you were extremely nice to me you were nice to me because you were trying to know me you were nice to me because you were making your points you were nice to me because you didn't want me to get scared of you so all the love bombing all the mushiness all the cuteness all the lengthy conversations all the pictures you were sending me the memes and then it continued each time when you wanted me to do something for you something to please you the same pattern repeated so it did not feel new it did not feel new it did not feel like it was the first time because it was literally getting copy pasted every time you wanted me to become your puppet and every time i would not want to be your puppet and every time i would go into my own zone things would always be better for me it always took us time to come back to each other and every time we went away from each other it would happen out of the blue it would happen when i would literally think that everything will be okay and that's when you would ghost me or you would just vanish on me for no rhyme or reason you won't even tell me that you need your space or you won't even tell me that i've made a mistake you won't tell me anything it was just a dark feeling a weird feeling that i could just not message you because you would not reciprocate so once or twice you did not reciprocate i would stop and then there would be nothing from you for such a long time and then when i would literally be stupid and forgive everything i would message you or i would contact you or i would call you up you would always be so excited you would always say oh i missed you so much i was waiting for your message i was like i knew you would message me i knew you would call me where were you what were you up to we have stupid fights but it started becoming more and more evident to me that no matter how much excitement you showed to me each time i called you or messaged you or contacted you you were never the first one to do that and so many times you got that opportunity you never did it and when the one last time i decided to never contact you again you never contacted me you would stalk me i knew you were watching me 
in fact each time i came back to you or we came back to each other you would always tell me that you have been watching me you had been watching me you knew everything about me all the places i was going to all the people i was talking to everything so it was bizarre to me to actually be around a person like that who would manipulate me so much who would make me turn into a stupid person each time i don't want to be that stupid person i always want to be nice to you i always wanted to be nice to you but i think all the inner work that i have done has made me realize that i deserve much better and i'm worthy of much better maybe i did not know that i was worthy of much better and that i deserve much better that i was actually falling into a pit but now that i've learned to fly i'm happy with people who can fly with me i'm happy to be surrounded by people who are not going to make a big deal about small things who are not going to take it on their ego who are not going to play mental games with me who will not try to take control over me if they try to play this game of domination and submission i always can stand up and walk out of the door nobody is going to tie me up to it i am not going to feel kidnapped i am not going to feel watched i am not going to feel violated anymore and it's crazy that sometimes i do get scared that a person like you or maybe you might come back into my life again so i had to do a lot of changing i had to change and become a completely new person because the old person was not able to protect me with all due respects to her with all gratitude to her cuz she stood up with things that i don't think anyone can stand up to the girl that i was the woman that i was the little girl i was the child i was she has really gone through a lot she's a very brave and courageous person so i have all my respect and regard for her and that's the reason why i want her to take rest i want her to take rest and i want this new me to take position cuz i am going to protect my inner child and i'm also going to protect her as she is resting and her wounds are healing her pain is getting dissolved i am going to be the mother that she never had so as a mother as a protective mother also as a mother who gives all independence to the child and i feel that my child is fully capable of taking care of herself i'm going to watch her from a distance and i'm going to show to her how to protect herself and the rest she can do the rest she can do similarly i hope that whether you did wrong to me or not i forgive you i also want to let go of all this anger that i have stored in my heart for you i give it back to you you please keep it it belongs to you you need to work on it just the way i have worked on my pain you need to work on your pain and i wish you all the very best thank you so much for listening to me masculine hope that one day you can also be the divine masculine so this is where this letter ends it was quite intense to channel this and thank you so much for all of you amazing and wonderful people who relate with the divine feminine the goddess energy keep doing your inner work it will take you places for sure get into therapy work on yourself do whatever it takes to be a person who can take care of your own self so you have to become your own teacher mother father everybody best friend exactly what's being discussed here on this session and in this letter so i'll see you soon in another one one love and peace out